I want to thank Z-Banks for sending us this Two Trees TS2 laser. And I'm pretty excited to have it because I think it's going to be a very cool addition to the studio. One thing I've learned about all these machines is they, they kind of have a base model, a base thing, and they sell you that, and that's what they ship to me. But they don't ship you all the accessories and add-ons and things you need to really make the machine function. For instance, this week I'm going to build a smoke enclosure, and that's to keep the thing totally enclosed so the smoke doesn't just go all over the all over the house and with it you need an air pump in which case i'm just using a 120 millimeter fan and the system for the window which is what this is going to be just to vent the smoke outside of the building you also need air assist and that is a stream of air that comes down at the nozzle right where the laser is pointing and it blows the debris from the cuts out of the way so that the laser can continue to make clean cuts the TS2 comes with an air nozzle and a hose, but no pump. So I got an aquarium pump and we're gonna modify it to supply the air. The other thing you have to have is you have to have a metal grate of some sort underneath the area where you are doing the cutting. Now, if you're engraving and you're never cutting through a surface, you really probably don't need that. For me, the big use of this thing is not gonna be so much engraving, but cutting out parts. So I have to have a metal table system that keeps the parts raised up off the surface so there's an air gap underneath that you don't want to catch the thing on fire, basically, when you're cutting these parts out. So we're going to do the enclosure, the venting, the air assist, the table, and we'll get all that done and get the whole laser set up and get ready to make some fun parts. I have to say it, the assembly of this laser went really smooth. It was easy. And to start, I clamped the back of the laser to the table and uh, that just held it upright nice and secure and made it easy to attach the other parts to it. This feels like a premium machine. Everything went together fine. The holes were all in the right places. Everything was threaded correctly. Everything fitted. And so assembly was quick and easy. In my youth, I worked as a contortionist in the circus. And that's a lucky thing because some of these screws were a little bit difficult to locate and install. But they all went in in the end. The Z-axis screw makes it really easy to set the laser to the various thicknesses of the material you want to cut. The belts, the wiring, everything went together just fine. The labeling was good. Uh, there just was no hitches along the way. You can go on the website and you can buy all, you know, all the accessories like uh, an air assist pump and a ventilation enclosure, all that good stuff. But uh, I thought uh, instead of doing that, I'd fabricate all this stuff and put it together myself. I realize this wouldn't be the best option for a lot of people, but for me, I happen to have a wood shop, so it's fun and easy for me to fabricate stuff. One of the things I did was to make sure that all the parts, the sides, the back, the bottom, the top, were all separate pieces, and uh, I didn't want them to be all glued together in a single unit. I wanted them to be able to come apart. So it was just a lot of clamps to glue everything together. That's simple enough. And then I just use washer head screws to screw the whole thing together. So you could take this thing apart and pack it flat. Lots of clamps, lots of strips of wood, and uh, otherwise a very simple box, not hard to make, and uh, it was kind of a fun project. The machine needs to vent out the smoke, and for that I'm just using a 120 millimeter fan. And I modeled up this flange, this hose connector. It's just a four inch connector. So I took it as an opportunity to fire up one of the new 3D printers, and I just printed it up in black PLA, and here it is attached to the side of the enclosure. I painted the main part of the enclosure black, just using a straight black acrylic paint. One of the things you really need is you need some kind of a metal bed underneath the cutting head so that there's like an air space. You've got to hold the material up off the surface, plus you don't want the thing to catch fire. I looked at a lot of the ones that were on Amazon and stuff, and I thought they were either pricey or too small or not looking like they really fit my machine. And so the solution that I finally settled on was just using corner bead, drywall corner bead. It's cheap. Uh, it was easy to work with. So I cut them here on the chop saw and then screwed them all together, just three screws per each strip. And uh, I think four lengths of eight foot made, made the exact number I needed to cover a 24 inch by 24 inch square base. That worked out really good. I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty proud of this. I bought an air pump that's really used for supplying air to aquariums. And the adapter, the nozzle coming out of the air pump, did not fit the hose at all. So one task was to drill out this brass nozzle to fit the hose that was pre-installed on the laser. 
Now, this may not work because I'm planning to just epoxy that hose in there, and I may have to engineer a better and more secure connection between the hose and the pump. We are coming down to the end of this project, and all we have left to do is the hood or uh, the lid or whatever you want to call it. And the main job of this part is, of course, to keep the smoke in and to keep, the, uh, keep my eyeballs from getting fried by the laser. I don't have fancy holding jigs or anything like that for the table saw, so what I do is I just bandsaw as straight as I can, parallel to the final cuts, then we take it over to the table saw and just nick it off using the part itself as a fence to make the final shape. Okay, let's glue these strips on. I will start with one end when I'm gluing on strips of wood because invariably they're warped, as this is. So you just use the edge of the piece you're gluing it to to align it and make it straight. Work your way down and bend the piece as you go. My messy glue joints, not gonna matter because it's all gonna be painted. So it doesn't make a bit of difference. That's one. But now we gotta make sure that we glue up the other one mirrored. Because if I did them exactly the same, they'd be no good. So this one's gotta be the mirror opposite. This is the part that's gonna fit in the window. This is just a little enclosure that attaches the flange to. 3D printed this, which was very cool. So let's get this thing glued up and attached to this. The box is built and I'm not gonna bore you with how I put it together because it really was just a simple box. Probably the only interesting thing about building it were the angles at each cross piece. So it wasn't simply a matter of ripping these pieces of plywood into cross pieces. I also had to cut them at an angle, but that's a simple thing to do. You just take it over to the table saw, angle the blade, and away you go. And it makes it quick and easy. So this is looking pretty good. I say we go ahead and paint it. But the first thing I'm going to do before I can paint the box is I want to get rid of some of this tape residue. The easiest way to get tape and stickers off of things is to get them wet with acetone. And let's see if this acetone will work its magic and soften up that adhesive, that tape adhesive, and really soak it in there. Sometimes you'll run into tapes that will not cooperate, but not these. It comes right off. Just takes the goo right off. This sticker's a little bit more stubborn, but only a little. I want the inside of the case to be white because I want it to reflect light nicely. Man, this Rust-Oleum primer is nice stuff. Not a sponsor, but it ultra cover. They're not kidding, man. Okay, I'm keeping track of this stuff, man. That stuff worked great. This is the uh, apparatus that holds the ventilation pipe into the window. Let's get it all assembled. It's ready to go. All right, I always love it when all the holes line up and everything matches. Once in a while, I do the right thing. I took my own advice and I checked to make sure that the silver paint would play nice with that primer because they're different brands. Works out fine, so we're good to go. All right, it is looking pretty good. One of my brilliant thoughts was that we needed a light inside of the enclosure. And I looked for some small like under cabinet lights and really couldn't find what I wanted. So I said, oh, good. Let's just get another kit with more wires. So that's what I did. I got a LED lighting kit. It comes with six bulbs, but I have determined that this cabinet doesn't need six bulbs in it. It's just crack and peel stick double-sided tape. You put your boy connector with your girl connector, like that. More crack and peel. Okay, put this one right in the middle, about like that. Okay, same thing over here. Point a girl. Here we go, let's see. It's peel and stick. Last row, I think I'm plugged in. Just, what, are the, what are the odds? Think this is gonna work? <laughs> I'm no electrician, let's see. Any mark? Get set. Oh. <laughs> 
Whoa, that's bright. Holy moly. That is nice and bright, huh? <laughs> Excellent. All right, let's go install those things in the case. Okay, I drilled the holes in the top and in the lamp at the same time. And I always drill holes a little bit oversize. So that, just hang it on the center hole for now. Give me a nut here. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. All right, let's see if the other holes will screws line up. They should, like I said, I drilled the holes and in the cover and in the fixture that I built at the same time. So if they don't line up, it will very much be my fault. And they're slightly oversized to give me some wiggle room because you always need wiggle room. Never drill a quarter inch hole for a quarter inch bolt because you won't have wiggle room. Oh, look at that. All the bolts went right through perfectly. Absolutely no problems. Now this could be fun, but it could also be bad. It's time that we peeled off the paper of our beautiful lens. I always try to peel this paper off in one piece if it's at all possible. Because once you can start playing the game where you're peeling off little bits, it gets real tedious real fast. All right, now, here's the thing that I don't want to screw up, and I really don't want to screw this up. I'm gonna screw this in, and when I tighten the screws, I would very much not be happy if I crack the plex. I don't want to crack the plex putting in the screws, so I wanna put them in real easy, because you can over tighten these screws and just snap the plex off. And if you want a recipe for sadness, that is it. Okay, so what we need to do now is to attach the lid to our box. This is gonna be a really good setup. Couldn't be more pleased. Wow, this thing is hooked up, wired up, and ready to make parts. Now, I've never operated a laser before, but I've given a lot of thought to the kinds of projects I'd like to do, and that's what we're gonna get started on next week. Let's fire this thing up, get it cutting, and see what kind of things we can make. Hey, I hope you liked this video. I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for being here. I will see you next week.